bodies of water are more than just vital elements of our natural environment. Our seas, rivers, lakes and streams are also shapers of culture and tradition. In the sixth season of Dayao, we go with the flow to see how this most vital of resources has enabled us to become bearers of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. In this episode of Daya, we continue our exploration of bodies of water that have shaped many indigenous cultures. Not many Filipinos know of the Bugkalot of Neva Vizcaya, of their history as nomadic farmers, as fishermen, as warriors and headhunters. Fewer Filipinos know of how closely their lives adhere to the cycles and features of nature, and how an instrument of progress like a dam can affect a way of life so adversely. The Bugkalot occupy the forests and mountains of Neva Vizcaya, Quirino, and Aurora provinces. In Vizcaya, the Bugkalot are concentrated around forests of the headwaters of the Cagayan River. Unlike the other indigenous peoples of the Cordillera, not many early studies or documents exist about the Bugkalot. The few documents and studies refer to them by the more popular name Ilongot. It was for their ferocity and daring as headhunters that the Ilongot were well known. Long after other Cordillera peoples had been pacified, the Ilongots were still actively practicing headhunting. The definitive text on the practice and psychology of the Ilongot headhunter was published in 1980 by anthropologist Renato Rosaldo. Having lived with the Ilongot for many years, he was able to study a society that had been shaped by headhunting from 1883, the time when the Ilongot were first documented, to 1974 when the practice waned. The cult of the warrior headhunter was a deeply rooted one in Ilongot culture. A successful headhunt allowed a young man to transition to adulthood and married life. Men who had taken heads were accorded the right to wear the prestige symbols that marked their status. The headdress adorned with the skull of the Kalau bird was the most important of these status symbols, as were the earrings fashioned from the red beak of the Kalau. Red leglets were also the mark of an accomplished headhunter. Rosado tried to explain the need for taking heads by linking this to the elongate concept of ligat, a deep and troubling depression that afflicted Ilongot youth and led to anger and aggression. Only after having successfully, having taken a head, could one sense of order and balance return. In 1967, a group of Ilongot leaders came together to establish the Bugkalot Confederation, an organization of Ilongot clans with the aim of establishing a new identity. Now, as Bugkalot, their past as headhunters could be erased. 
as Bugkalot, the concept and image of the warlike Ilongot could be rehabilitated. But much as their storied controversial past could be rewritten, the Bugkalot ties to forest and river stayed on, slowly becoming more imperial in these times. In their agriculture, their ways of fishing and harvesting, the Bogkalot still very much resemble their Ilongot forebears. And though much of the landscape is changing, they still cling to these, both by choice and by necessity. The dry rice method of planting is more favored by the Bogkalot. The steep terrain and the small land space have made them experts in this method of agriculture. Ang kabuhayan ng mga katutubo rito sa amin, uh, isa yung pagtatanim, pangangaso. Pangingisda. Kumukuha rin kami ng mga raw material sa gugubat kagaya ng yertok na ipinagbibili sa baba para ipalit ng mga kailangan namin kagaya ng asin, sabon, mga damit. Sa farming po namin, uh, upland, upland na farming. Bali, sa aming pagkaka, pagtatanim, hindi namin uh, kailangang diligin, kundi meron lang siyang seasonal. So panahon ng tag-ulan, yung pagtatanim para yung ulan na mismo ang didilig doon sa halaman hanggang sa anihin. So, pagka ganitong summer, uh, land preparation, by the month of uh, June, July, pagtatanim na yan para by October, November, hinaharvest na. Initutusok. Ang gamit kasi nun, kaya pag itinusok mo ganun, tas may lalagyan. Kasi pag umulan, yung tubig, papasok doon siyang didilig doon sa, nandun sa loob. Pag umuulan, napupuno siya. Doon na magigising yung binhi para kumuan siya, mabuhay. Kaya kahit pag alimbal na makina siya, yung, yung ding butas na yun, yun yung nagsisilbing ipuna ng tubig para mabuhay yung halaman. In the once lush jungles that cover these hills, sunlight needed to reach the plotted gardens below. A unique system of pollarding or cutting the branches of trees was developed. Using lengths of rattan vine as slack bridges strung between trees and branches, the men would travel through the forest treetops, cutting overhanging branches and allowing the sun to nourish their hard-grown crops. Uh, yun po yung tinatawag naming tabuhok. Pamamagitan ng yantok na yun, nakakalipat yung isang tao doon sa kabilang puno. Kasi nung araw na masyado pang malalaki ang mga kahoy, hindi namin pag-aaksayahan ng panahon na pulakin dahil sa lalaki ng puno, tas gulok lang ang pangputol, ay eh, abutin kami ng siyam-siyam. Kaya, Isa sa kultura namin na tatanggalan lang namin ng mga tangkay, mga dahon-dahon yung kahoy. Tapos susunugin na yung pagka natuyo yung mga dahon na yun, susunugin, open na. So wala nang nakakover dun sa tanim. Yun ang nakikiusap naman kami dun sa kahoy o dun sa, sasabihin namin, puputulin namin yung, yung tangkay mo dahil... Uh, gusto namin ma mawawala na yung dahon, yung dahon ng kahoy. Uh, yun po yung tinatawag na demo. Uh, meron kasing, sa lahat ng tribo, meron communication between nature and then sa tao. 
So, yung nilalaman ng awitin is parang nagpapaalam siya doon sa kalikasan na, o oh, ito, uh, tatanggalin ko na itong mga bahagi ng uh, katawan mo kasi gagamitin ko para sa ganitong uh, active gawain ko. So, ganun. Parang may pahinto, kumaga, may pagpaalam sa kalikasan. It is also said that this system was used for the warriors and headhunters to travel noiseless and undetected through the treetops. In their relationship with the tributaries of the mighty Cagayan River, the Bogkalot remained most steadfast in the ways of their Ilongot forebears. Uh, ang pangingisda, nakaugalian ng namin na uh, gawin araw sa gabi. So, ibak magkaiba kasi minsan yung hinuhuli sa araw at saka sa gabi. Mostly sa gabi, noong mas mga lumang panahon, ang hinuhuli lang namin kadalasan sa gabi is mga igat, palos. Ganun. Pero sa araw, lahat ng madadaan ng isda ay hinuhuli. Pagka kasi gabi, ganitong klase ang panghuli dahil tutukan. Pero pag araw, meron yung yung may tali naman kasi pang malayuan naman dahil hindi naman sila malalapitan. Lalo pag madilim, hindi naman nila makikita yung lumalapit sa kanila. Lalo pag may ilaw, nasisilaw lang sila. Kaya minsan yung isda, tinatago niya yung mata niya, tumatalikod. O kaya naman, yung mga burasi, meron yung mga klase ng isda na yung ulo lang nilang itatago nila sa bato. Kaya kahit hawakan mo, kahit wala kang pana, pwede mo silang hulihin. Nahawakan lang din sa hasang, sa ganito. Ganyan. Pero ito mga tilapia, mga konto, mailap sila. Hindi sila pwedeng... Maliban pagka naiipit na sila sa mga bato, na halimbawa sumingit sa bato, nakukuha din namin sila na kahit hindi pinapana. Ang makukuha dito yung mga palos, Bunod, mga banak dati, may mga banak din naman ng akakon dito. Isa sa nakaugalian namin na pangingisda sa araw, yung sama-sama na pangingisda buong community. Mangingisda kami, lulusong kami sa ilog. Sa umaga, lahat ng kalalakihan, mangingisda. Yung mga babae naman, naghahanda ng babayo, niluluto sila ng pagkain. Tapos yung mahuhuli sa umaga hanggang tanghali, iluluto lahat yan pagkain ng buong community. Pagkatapos nun, maninisid ulit sa hapon. Yung mahuhuli na sa hapon, yun na yung hahati-hatiin para sa lahat ng pamilya na sumama. O kahit hindi ka pamilya, kahit hindi sumama, kung gustong bigyan, kung maraming huli, meron din binibigyan ng mga naiiwan sa Bariyo. Bahagi ng ikinabubuhay namin, so ang isda, malaking portion din ng aming kan, kultura na pinagkakabuhayan. Pagka kasi panahon na tagulan na malabo ang ilog, hindi kami ganong makapangisda, so nasa gubat kami. Mga babayram mo naman o saang hinahanap, tapos yung mga bunga ng kahoy. Pero pag panahon na malinaw ng ilog, nangingis na kami. Mga ninuno namin, meron din sa silang mga tinatangang mga agi-agimat. So meron mga gumagamit ng mga ritual para sa pangingisda. Kahit kumbaga parang basta-basta lang yung pangingisda niya, meron at meron siyang makukuha. May mga dahon, mga baging na pinagsasama-sama ng mga may gumagamit. Parang anting, uh, agimat niya sa pangingisda. Mahamad. In their ritual chants and the communal dances, modern-day Bugkalot once again claim their affinity with the Ilongot, whose name they have renounced.
It is a quandary of governments and technocrats to build a dam that will fulfill the needs of many while depriving those on whose ancestral domain the dam is built. This is a crisis that the Bukalot now face. Sampo. Balang ingis na kami dyan sa luwasan pag uh, ano ba, malabo naman dito tapos kung dyan nang ingis na rin kami kaya lang pag uh, naubos na agad hindi na wala nang ganong mga kan mahuli maliliit lang mamahuhuli dyan hindi kagaya ng ganito na kan ngayon kasi kaya nakakahuli ng malaki rito binabawal namin ang pangisda nito hanggang doon may pagkakataon lang na pwedeng ipapayal si Dior, pero ito bawal talagang pangislaan. In 2004, after many years of protracted study and negotiations, the Kaseknan Dam Project was inaugurated by then-President Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo. The dam was supposed to feed the waters of the Taan River, and its tributaries into the Pantabangan Dam, thus irrigating the fields of Lola Nueva Vizcaya and Nueva Ecija. Much as the dam was seen as a boon to the lowland farmers, it was seen by the Bugkalot as a threat to the Taan River waters on which they depended on. May panahon na lalo pagka yung simula ng tagaraw hanggang sa hanggang sa Mayo uh, nagpupunta yung bawat lugar dito sa mismong Agos ng Ilong na kasignan para mga isda so nag-aabot-abot diyan nag uh, nang sama-sama nang ngisda at uh, yung ibang mga nahuhuli is inuwi ay uh, iba pinagbibili iba naman ay eh, pasalubong para sa pamilya gawain namin noon pero ngayon nawala na yung bahagi na yan dahil sa epekto ng pagkakaharang ng tubig dahil sa naita yung uh, kasiknan multipurpose hydropower project na uh, pinakiusap ng NIA sa may mga katutubo ng araw na makapagtayo ng dam dito sa kasiknan at saka sa tang so mula nung naitayo yung dalawang dam na yan, hindi na namin nagagawa yung bagay na yan dahil tuyo na itong babang bahagi ng dam, wala kasing tubig kahit anong tubig na maagos. Kaya yung mga isda na dapat sana malayang makarating sa amin, galing doon sa gilid ng dagat, wala na. So kung ano na lang meron dito, na lang ang aming nakukuha. Kaya hindi na nakaka yung buong, kahit pumunta yung lumusong yung buong pamayanan, wala na, hindi na sasapat yung mahuhuli. So ang epekto sa amin, una yung sa aming pag, pagkikita-kita, pagsasama-sama ng mga katribo sa iba't ibang lugar, na wala. Tapos yung aming kabuhayan, lalo sa pangingisda, na wala. So ngayon napakalimitado ng kabuhayan. Nakikipagsapa lang lang kami, nakikigaya sa pagtatanim ng mga halaman, gulay para lang uh, mabuhay. Kasi sa na, naipektuhan din kasi ng pagkakaroon ng dami yung dating napakaraming mga hayop sa paligid namin. Dahil sa ingay ng makinarya, naglayuan na yung mga usang, mga baboy na mo, mga umuhi, na dati-dati makikita lang din dito sa gilid ng ilog. Pero ngayon, kailangan pa namin mag mag uh, isang linggo para lang makahanap ng kailangan sa gubat. Uh, oh, sabi natin nakakatulong pero sa ibang pamayanan. Pero sa amin na nagmamayari nitong lupain, walang economic na tulong sa amin. Plus, dahil apektado rin yung aming kabuhayan sa tubig, dapat yung itinatadhana sana ng ating batas na dapat yung kalikasan hindi nasisira kagaya ng mandatory flow na 10%. Dapat may tubig yan para at least yung mga 
hayop na dapat mabuhay dito sa lower portion ng dam. Malaya silang makapagparami. And then, pwede naming mapakinabangan. So, yun po yung karamihan. Yung, yung mandatory na dapat na daloy ng tubig at saka yung counterpart na dapat naman sana uh, mabigyan nila ng kabuhayan o uh, merong bahagi na dapat sana mapunta sa amin na nagmamayari nitong lupain. Eh, dapat sana may, may bigay. So, kung maaari na makarating sa mas mataas na mga namamahala na mumuno ng ating bansa na mabigyang pansin na yung bagay na yun. The waters of river that once nurtured their culture flow onto their lands less freely now, as the full might and effectivity of the dam is felt. With the dwindling water supply, what happens to the lives of the Bugkalot? Maraming isda nun, hindi kumpara ngayon. Eh, ngayon, hindi na kami ganong makapangisda dahil gaya dyan sa baba ng dam. Wala ng tubig, hindi na umaagos ang tubig dyan. Kung ano lang yung mga naiipon dun sa mga layon-layon, yun na lang na, halimbawa, may maliliit, lumaki yun lang nahuhuli namin. Pero wala na. Pagka naubos yun, wala na. Wala na kaming may isda dahil hindi naman na makagos yung tubig. Oh, da kanine The culture of our indigenous peoples is the most harmonious with nature. For them, everything in nature is alive. Not only trees and animals have spirits, even rocks, earth, air, water, fire have spirits, and they are all alive. That's why nature to them is very sacred. And they live in harmony with all these spirits. That's why if you are to build an infrastructure for these indigenous peoples. The settings should be as natural as possible. I would also recommend that the masters among these indigenous peoples be identified. The masters of the arts, the masters of their faith, the masters of their uh, agriculture, the, mas the masters of their medicine be identified so that uh, the government can support these masters, so that these masters can teach the people their children, especially the way of the elders, so that the culture will not disappear even for a long, long time. The Bugkalot may have renounced the violent ways of their Ilongot ancestors, but in many ways much of the archaic culture and knowledge systems remains with them. These are traditions that they themselves have sifted through as they alter their identity. These are the practices that make the Bugkalot proud of who they have become. But in the face of technological development that alters the river on which they've lived, how will they cope? Just as they have survived a crucial change of identity, so do I hope that the Bugkalot, however and whenever they adapt to change, may continue to be bearers of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. <laughs>